asking about the section in the GIFA Act that talks about exclusion of personal information and its personal non name and non-personal contact details of the person who is performing a public function. Now, we can apply that very clearly for our staff. But what about people who are voluntary members of advisory committees? But they have a role under our Act because they are the review committees and they are the panels and so on. So they have quite important functions. Do we apply that provision to them? Because they're not staff, but they're volunteers and they fit, fit within the legal scheme of things. Yeah. And they also feel very worried about providing their personal information because all that information would then have to go out to disgruntled clients who object to the fact that their applications have been refused. So there's a privacy element to that. Well, I'd say the fact that the name of the person fulfilling the public function and the title or the name of the board or whatever as relevant information that should be in the public domain. Um, but if the next level was their personal mobile or personal email address, I wouldn't include that. But the fact that they are performing a, a public function, presumably under a legislative mandate, fits that definition for mine. But what mine. people do is they ask for information as to which um, committee member decided my matter. So right. they want the most specific names of the people who dealt with that particular application. Yes. So that's, that's where it creates a bit of a problem. Yes. We can say the names of the committee members are, are, are in our annual report. Yes. So they're, they're in the public domain. Yes. Yeah, look, that's probably a good answer. So look, where I come from, decision makers have to be accountable for their decisions and have to put their names to them. Now, I've done sort of, you know, judicial decisions, and that's one of the things that the presumption that we do. Uh, the workers, as volunteers, are deemed workers under the workers' compensation provisions. So they're captured in that sort of legal industrial context. Uh, I think in that example, the test would be, do they have a work phone or a work address allocated to them? If they don't, their contact details are government information. They're not working from home. They come in, for want of a better term, hot desk, possibly in a boardroom, and return the grants or whatever it might be. Um, maybe we could say that, you know, Mr. Maggot here is allocated to the Burwood office, or something like that, um, or the legal aid of Chris and Paramount. But I think that would be the test, what is it? Because you're not giving out, Deborah O'Donnell on a computer application is not giving out her private mobile and her home phone number or her home address. She's giving out her work number and her work address. So I think that's a test if they don't have one because they're volunteers. The volunteers in policing, they would have a station phone number that would be provided as a way of contacting the person um, and an address what station they're allocated to. Stephen from Hornsby 